Yes, friends, checks are going out to millions of Americans this very week. New batches of relief payments are being deposited, as well as mailed out to eligible Americans. Republicans and Democrats are now trying to reach a deal as soon as possible on future relief assistance, and some lawmakers insist that more aid go out to a more targeted group of individuals. Friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for all of the details. To say thank you for watching my, to say thank you for joining me here every day, I'm giving away four $75 Walmart gift cards every week. Please make sure that you click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. Friends, the more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Also, during the months of October, November, and December, I will be giving away surprise $200 gift cards to those of you that have been in this community for several months. Friends, please make sure you listen for the keywords and do stay tuned for those videos. Up to 23 million California residents are about to receive tax refunds of as much as $1,050, thanks to one-time stimulus payments that the state has approved. The payments, which will total $9.5 billion, mark the largest program of its kind in the state's history. The initiative is called the Middle Class Tax Refund. It comes as inflation nationally has reached historic highs. California had a record $97.5 billion surplus as it finalized its budget including the payments earlier this year. California Governor Gavin Newsom said in a statement, We know it is expensive right now, and California is putting money back into your pockets to help. We're sending out refunds worth over $1,000 to help families pay for everything from groceries to gas. To qualify for these payments, you must meet certain requirements. You must have been a resident of California for six months or more in the year 2020 tax year and be a current state resident. You must have filed a 2020 tax return by October 15, 2021 and have adjusted gross income within the required thresholds. Payments for eligible couples who file jointly may range from $400 to $1,050. Qualifying individuals may receive $200 to $700. The amount of these checks depends on two factors, your income, and number of dependents. The most generous amount, which is $1,050, goes to married couples who file jointly with $150,000 or less in income and a dependent. A couple in that income category will receive $700 if they have no dependents. Individual taxpayers with $75,000 or less in income may receive $700 if they have a dependent and $350 if they do not. The payments are gradually phased out for those who are married and have an income of half a million dollars. California residents with incomes above those thresholds will not receive any stimulus payment. Friends, the key word for this video is Miami, Florida. If you would like to enter the next Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is Miami, Florida and additional keywords of any video of mine that you watch. And please make sure, friends, that you're also subscribed to my channel. Republicans are not happy with President Biden's student loan forgiveness, and some of them have taken the policy to court. The administration faces at least four major lawsuits, and a federal judge will hear arguments for one led by Republican states next week. They could grant the state's request to pause on Biden's debt relief plan. At the end of August, Biden announced up to $20,000 in debt relief for federal bars who are making under $125,000 a year. It was a long-anticipated announcement, given the relief was something that he had promised on the campaign trail and was a policy that Democratic lawmakers had been pushing him to enact ever since. While some Democrats wanted the president to go even bigger on the loan forgiveness, they still lauded the policy as a significant first step towards addressing the $1.7 trillion student debt crisis. But many Republicans felt otherwise. In the months leading up to Biden's announcement, 
They slammed the broad debt relief as unfair, and they threatened to pursue legal action if the policy was implemented. According to Yahoo News, another component of the plan is often overlooked. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona told reporters this week, student loan forgiveness got a lot of attention, but the income-driven repayment process, that to me, I am more excited about that. It is cutting student loan payments in half so that it's more accessible to everyday Americans that want to access higher education. Income-driven repayment plans make student monthly loan payments affordable by adjusting for the individual borrower's income and family size. While these plans existed before President Biden, his debt relief plan would require participants to pay 5% of their discretionary income rather than the previous 10%. This means the average annual student loan payment will be lowered by more than $1,000 for borrowers. President Biden's plan will also forgive loan balances after 10 years of payments for borrowers with original loan balances of $12,000 or less. Previously, the government forgave loan balances after 20 years for these borrowers. Friends, please let me know your thoughts on the student loan forgiveness plan. Well, my great and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, my dear friends, for joining me here every time when I post a video. Thank you, my friends, and have a wonderful and blessed day. Energy for America bill, which passed the Senate Finance Committee in the middle of 2021, made up 90% of the final climate package that we dealt with here in the Senate. It meant that for the first time in American history, we in effect set aside the tax code and say that for the future, the more you reduce carbon emissions, the bigger your tax savings. And none of it could have happened without a young staffer named Bobby Andres, who day after day for years reached out to every member of the Senate on both sides of the aisle, made himself available so that we could build a technology-neutral, science-driven, market-oriented approach that is going to make it possible for us to reduce carbon emissions significantly by the end of this decade. It simply doesn't happen without this dedicated young man, Bobby Andres. Chris Arneson, John Goldman, Sarah Schaefer were instrumental in going after the tax loopholes that allowed massive, profitable corporations to get away with paying little or nothing. Adam Carrasso and Eric Lopresti helped to make sure the IRS had the resources to go after wealthy tax chiefs who skip out on paying what they owe. Had a lot of debate around here about taxes. Working people, for example, in Maine, pay taxes with every single paycheck. That's not the way it works with the wealthy tax cheats. And Adam and Eric focused on policies that would allow us to ensure they pay their fair share. Drew Crouch contributed tax policy help on prescription drugs. Rachel Kaus put in extensive work in developing the billionaire income tax. The president, by the way, has a billionaire minimum income tax. Hasn't been enacted fully yet, but I think it's well understood that everybody in America has to pay their fair share. Grace Enda assisted on the clean energy tax policies and more. Ursula Klossing supported the tax team and made sure we were ready for the floor debate. Arthur Shemitz and Melanie Jonas also supported the tax team's hard work. One other point about the Finance Committee's majority tax team. If anybody out there mistakenly believes that it is easy to offset legislation passed in the Senate, the reason they might think that way is because our incredible tax team somehow made it look effortless. The truth is it takes a ton of hard work. Patricio Gonzalez, a member of our investigative team, has been digging into the tax practices of some of the biggest drug companies. His work went a long way to convincing key senators that our corporate laws needed reform, our corporate tax laws. Ryder Tobin, a number member, another member of the investigations team, contributed to that work and made it possible 
for us to survive the grueling floor debate, as did Madison Moskowitz, Claire Caliban, and Bonnie Million. Healthcare. When it comes to drug prices, Big Pharma had had a stranglehold on the United States Senate for way too long. They used that ban on negotiation and guarded it like it was the holy grail.